A new publication in the New England Journal of Medicine shows some sobering statistics about the lack of improvement and in fact, a decline in the control of patients with type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure over the course of the past decade. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and this was a little depressing to, to, see this store, uh, to see this paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine. What they did was they went back and looked at the NHANES data, so the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, which is a huge survey where they're just following patients um, and collecting data on them over time. And what they found was after 2010, leading up to 2018, the percentage of patients who had their diabetes controlled, and we'll talk about their definition, declined significantly. And the same for people who, with their blood pressure being controlled, declined significantly. And to make it even more sobering, they defined control for type 2 diabetes as a hemoglobin A1C of less than 7. Less than 7. So prediabetes starts with a hemoglobin A1C of 5.7, with diabetes starting above 6.4. And they define control as less than 7, which I find so just, oh, <laughs> I can't even begin. I mean, we, we, we should not be defining control of diabetes like, like that. And there was a recent study published in Jack, which we did uh, a video on as well, showing subclinical atherosclerosis, meaning um, cardiovascular disease accumulating all the way down to a hemoglobin A1C of 5.5. So, so to say control of seven is really misleading, but here are the sobering statistics. Between 2007 and 2010, the number of patients who had a hemoglobin A1C of less than seven was 57%. So just barely more than half the patients achieving what I would say is a very suboptimal definition of control. But then as we fast forward to 2015, 2018 time period, that number went down to 50%. So now we're right at half. We dropped 7%. And then along those same lines, defining controlled blood pressure is less than 140 over 90 which again is not the ideal blood pressure that we should be shooting for. That should be at least 130 over 80 or probably even lower, 120 over 80. Control in that same time period decreased from 74% down to 70%. So at least it's higher up to almost three fourths of the patients, but again, moving the wrong direction. And here's what's so fascinating or disturbing is this happened in a time period where there are new drugs for type two diabetes that are possibly the most effective drugs we've ever had and new guidelines for blood pressure saying that we should be treating it more aggressively. This is all happening in that time frame. yet care worsened. I don't know how much more information we need to show the standard of care is not working. The current paradigm for treating type two diabetes, treating high blood pressure is not working and we need drastic changes. What we don't need is more medications. What we do need is a stronger focus on overall lifestyle interventions and a whole new structure about how we, how we can intervene and help patients. Writing a prescription, having a five minute office visit isn't getting it done. So whether it's group coaching sessions or online programs or whatever the case may be, finding inexpensive, scalable ways to intervene and help people learn about the lifestyle interventions to help them improve their health are so important. And finding the right lifestyle message. The whole eat less, move more, good luck. We know that doesn't work, right? It's hard to do. People need more guidance. You need a lifestyle intervention that addresses hunger and cravings and is enjoyable and palatable and sustainable because we're human beings. We have emotions and, and we feel hunger and we feel cravings. And if we don't address those, the best advice, the best intentions can go out the window. That's why I'm personally a big fan of low carb nutrition and of high protein nutrition. It doesn't mean you have to follow a keto diet, but by reducing the carbohydrates, by increasing the protein, studies show appetite improves, it decreases, right? Satiety increases, you eat fewer calories, you get your nutrition and all your, your nutritional needs are, are supplied and you do it in a way that improves your metabolic health and your body composition and helps you feel better. That's the message we need and finding the people who that's right for. Now, even that might not be right for everybody, but finding the people that that message is right for and giving it to them and promoting them. Stop thinking that there's one way to treat everybody and all we have to do is count our calories and exercise more and focus more on plants and that's gonna make everybody healthier because that message has failed. This data shows that message has failed. Now, the argument can be, well, it's not the intervention that has failed, right? Because people, the problem is most people don't follow that message. But that's the problem. We have to come up with a message that people will follow. 
That's the key. It doesn't matter how great a scientific study in animals is or how great a metabolic ward study for one week is. If people can't apply it to their life and follow it over years and enjoy it and incorporate it into who they are, then it's worthless. Throw it out the window. We've got to find the, that, the advice that people stick to and works. So I don't know how many times I can repeat that. I'm sorry if I've been a little repetitive on this, but I think it's such an important, pro, such an important point to hit home that doctors, coaches, researchers, and scientists all need to incorporate this philosophy because that's how we're going to get out of this mess. This NHANES data shows we are in a mess. Poorly defined, di poorly controlled diabetes being defined as controlled diabetes and go in the wrong direction. Poorly controlled blood pressure being defined as controlled blood pressure and go in the wrong direction. We need to turn this ship around. That's what we want to do here at Diet Doctor. We have guides and resources on how to control blood pressure, on how to control type 2 diabetes and metabolic disease and insulin resistance. And we hope that information can help you get on the right path. And if, you're, if your clinician is skeptical um, or doesn't believe that low carb has a role, we have a free three-hour three CME course, completely free on our website that they can take. You can share our information with them to help educate them. Your role is educating your doctor as much as their role is educating you. So I hope this was helpful. And I know together by, by spreading this word and by being passionate about it and talking about it and sharing resources, we can start to change the trend. And I want to see this next N. Haynes report show the exact opposite trend that instead of going from 57 down to 50%, now we're at 75% with people with their diabetes controlled and define that as less than 5.7, not less than seven. So if you thought this was helpful, please click the thumbs up, subscribe button, leave us a comment. We always like to hear from you and stay tuned for more updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Bye-bye everybody. Mm -hmm.